I think we are going to do one more question. I need to go and have lunch. I'm like, I'm starving. So we'll, we'll see. I don't think the um, the microphone is going to pick up my stomach. So it should be okay. All right. If one, oh, I like this. Limiting access. If 150 milliliter of carbon monoxide reacts with 150 milliliter of oxygen, according to the following equation, what is the composition of the gas mixture after the reaction? Right, let's try to understand what's going on. First of all, the first thing that they give you, 150 meter is volume, carbon monoxide is CO. So I'm going to try to understand and analyze the question at the same time. So volume of carbon monoxide given is 150 mil. And you also given 150 mil oxygen. Hopefully you remember that oxygen is um, O2. So volume of oxygen is also 150 mil. They also give you the condition. This is happening under SLC. And SLC means 25 Celsius degree and 100 kilopascal in pressure. And they react according to this equation. The question asks for the composition of gas. Now, what composition mean is, well, you can say how many percent so of, of the gas, well, the gas mixture at the end, how many percent is what gas? So I would assume that some of the gas in the mixture after the reaction has completed is going to be the product, which is carbon dioxide. If this is a complete reaction, all of the gas, 100% of the gas in the reaction, in the gas mixture at the end is going to be carbon dioxide. However, you there is no indication in the question of whether or not this reaction is complete and if one of these substances is in excess then you then it will also be in the reaction mixture at the end and you need to work out how much as well okay so this is um and plus any gas in excess so this is a composition this is gas mixture at the end gas mixture at the end, which is really what we after. We need to know how much, oh, actually, let me just finish writing this at the end. The gas mixture at the end potentially has some carbon dioxide and any gas, any reactant in excess. So you may have some of that, which means that when the question asks you, what is the composition of the gas mixture, essentially, in order to find the composition, I need to find, first of all, amount of uh, CO2 by amount. Um, oh, this is a good question to ask. It doesn't, does it matter whether it's volume or number of mole? I'm just going to go with amount here and then we're going to talk about it. I need to find amount of CO2 reacted. And I also need to find amount of any reactant in excess, which means that you need to work out if there is a reactant in excess and by how much in excess. Okay, so ultimately in order to find all of this, I need to work out, so basically step zero is going to find, determine if the reactant is in excess and by how much, determine the reactant in excess and you also in order to find the amount of product um, you need to find the limiting reagent and the limiting reagent I always abbreviate it to LR and by how much and by how much so this is ultimately what you need to do in order to answer the question now, if you remember from year 11, if we want to find which reactant is in excess and which is the limiting reagent, we have to start with mole ratio and we have to use, um, we have to determine the number of mole of the reactants. That would be true and you actually have enough information to do that. Everything is a gas, which means that you are allowed to use PV equal to NRT. Um, you have the condition, which is SLC. This also gives you the molar volume of um, any gas at SLC is 24.8. So if you want, you can 
determine the number of mole of carbon monoxide and the number of mole of oxygen, either by using PV equal to NRT or using the molar volume at SLC. However, I am not going to do any of that because this is a gas. There is actually another relationship that people often forget when it comes to gases. And I run out of room, so I'm just going to write it here. So for gases, there are a few ways of uh, representing this. The first one is that volume is directly proportional to number of mole, which means that the mole ratio, and I think this is probably a better way to represent it, mole ratio of gases only would be the same as volume ratio. So I should be able to determine which reactant is in excess and which is a limiting reagent by you just by using the volume of the reactants provided. I shouldn't have to do any conversion to the number of mole. So I'm just going to rewrite the equation again. I think it was 2CO plus O2 going to 2CO2. Everything is a gas. And you start with 150 mil of this and 150 mil of this. So the provided of provided is 150 mil over 150 mil. This is the amount given to you, which is a one to one ratio essentially. Now, if you look at the equation, which is the expected ratio, the required ratio from the equation, the mole ratio between CO2 and O2 is supposed to be 2 to 1. So theoretically speaking, for every mole or for every mil of, um, and okay, I'm just going to write here, this is the same as the mole ratio. So theoretically speaking, for every mil of oxygen, you need 2 mil of carbon dioxide to completely react it with it. Um, in reality, you only have one, which means you don't have enough carbon dioxide to completely react with all of the oxygen present. So from here, I know that, okay, I know that CO2 is the limiting reagent. Because you don't have enough CO2 to react completely with oxygen. And O2 is in excess. Okay. Now, if carbon mo monoxide, sorry, carbon monoxide is the limiting reagent. I need to fix this ratio because I got that is CO. All right. That makes more sense. Sorry about that. Um, right. If carbon monoxide is the limiting reagent, then you can work out the amount of product from it. So V of CO2 is going to be the same as V. Uh, I'm just going to, okay, let, let's do volume ratio. The volume ratio is going to be the same as the mole ratio, which is two by two, which means that the volume of CO2 will equal to the volume of CO, which is 150 mil. So you will produce 150 mil of carbon dioxide from this equation, from this reaction. And the amount of O2 in excess, now, if you look at the theoretical mole ratio, you need half the amount of carbon monoxide. So if I have 150 mil of carbon monoxide, then I only need 75 mil of O2 to completely react with it, which means that I will have 75 mil left over. So final answer in terms of composition. The composition of the final mixture will be 150 mil CO2 and 75 mil O2. That's it. I feel like my, my explanation is not very good for this one. To be fair, you can just find the number of moles. You should end up with the same answer, but this should be the fastest method. That's it.